I am Vijay Saraswati, E&I Department, Panimalar Engineering College. So I will be dealing with how to generate time delay in 8085 microprocessor. So we all know how a microprocessor works and what are the instruction sets in 8085 microprocessor. We know uh, what is the importance of generating a time delay in a program. It is used in many practical applications like uh, if you would have seen a traffic light, it will glow for a period of time like a red will glow for a period of time, then it will get switched off, then yellow will be there, then switched off, then green will be there. So timing delay plays a very important uh, role in many practical applications like uh, traffic light or motor control and in many other applications also. So we will see how to create a time delay in a basic processor like 8085 using instruction set. Okay. So uh, we will see about counters. So what we do in counters is uh, we generate a time delay using counters with instruction sets. That is we use a register, we load some value into the register and by using the register we either increment the value of that particular register or decrement that value so we generate a time delay accordingly. So we know instructions like DCR and INR. DCR is used for decrementing and INR is used for incrementing. So these two instructions can be used to increment the value of that particular register or decrement the value of that particular register. So by using these instructions, next what we do is we create a loop within it that is conditional loops. So by using this we will be able to create a delay. So this is uh, the basic uh, exp uh, explanation for delay. So what we do is we initialize the counter value here, then this is the body of the loop, then we update the count. Whatever value we want, we load it into the counter and then we check whether it has finished counting. So if it has not finished counting, the loop will keep on repeating. If it has finished uh, counting, it will come out of the loop. So this is how a delay is produced. So this particular set of instruction can be used as a subroutine. This particular set of instruction when it is used as a subroutine, the same subroutine can be called in many places in a program wherever you want to create a delay. So uh, we know. So how to create a delay? We know all the instruction set consists of many machine cycles like opcode fetch, memory read, memory write, etc. So each of the machine cycle, for example, if we see, uh, if we see about opcode fetch, it is made up of four T states, memory read and memory write, it is made up of uh, three T states each. So what do we do is, we write the instruction and then we calculate how many T states it takes to complete that particular instruction and accordingly we create a delay. So for example, we will see this, this particular instruction MVI B comma not phi, move immediately the data not phi into B register. So this instruction, it has a 7 T states that is opcode fetch and memory read. Opcode fetch it has 4 T states and memory read it has 3 T states. So 4 plus 3 it is equal to 7 T states. Now let us assume this particular microprocessor that we are talking about, we will assume it to be of 2 megahertz frequency. That is its speed is 2 megahertz frequency and its time period will be equal to 1 by F. That is 1 by 2 megahertz it will be equal to 0.5 microseconds. For this particular instruction MVI B comma not phi, it has 7 T states that is t is equal to 0.5 therefore time taken to execute this particular instruction mvi b comma not phi is 7 into 0.5 microseconds it will be equal to 3.5 microseconds so similarly for all the instructions we will be able to calculate the time it takes to execute that instruction so so time delay how do you calculate we will set up a loop so we'll calculate what is the delay inside the loop and what is the delay outside the loop and we'll add both. That will give you the time taken for executing that particular program. So we'll see, we'll see it as a subroutine. We'll see it as a subroutine so that it can be used in any uh, part of the program. Uh, we'll see now how to program a 8-bit counter. Uh, these three instructions MVIC comma count, DCRC and then jump not equal to zero loop. So MVIC comma count has 70 states, DCRC has 4 T states and jump not equal to zero has 7 or 10 T states. When this instruction, that is when this call, uh, loop 
uh, when this jump not equal to 0 is true, when this condition is true, this particular instruction has 10 p states. When the particular, this particular instruction when it is false, when jump not equal to 0 is false, it comes out of the loop, it comes out of the loop and goes to the next instruction. In that case, it has 7 t states. Okay, so, this has to be remembered when you are going to uh, calculate the time delay. So, MVC comma count has 7 t states. So, now we will see now. So, we will see how many uh, t states does this 3 instruction have, we are going to see it together. So, MVC has 7 t states, then we had this loop here uh, that is DCRC jump not equal to 0. So, suppose DCRC the count value I will assume it equal to 2. So, DCRC what will happen after execution of DCRC the count value becomes equal to 1. So, it is not equal to 0. Now, what happens? The loop gets repeated. Now, DCRC what will happen? DCRC 1 minus 1 it is equal to 0. The condition becomes true, it comes out of the loop. So, when the condition is true, jump not equal to 0, when this condition is true, the t states is 10. When the condition is false and when it comes out of the loop, the t states is equal to 7. So, we will have to remember this. So, that is what is given here for the calculation. MVC has 7 t states. DCRC and jump not equal to 0, that particular instruction is going to be repeated for count minus 1 times, for count minus 1 times. So, DCRC it is going to be made up of 4 t states and jump not equal to 0 it is made up of 10 t states until the condition is false. So, 10 plus 4 it is equal to 14, it is going to be repeated how many number of times? It is going to be repeated count minus 1 number of times and in our particular case it is 2 minus 1. So, 2 minus 1 into 14 plus in the last iteration what happens? The condition becomes false, so it comes out of the loop. So, in that particular case what happens to the t state of jump not equal to 0 loop? It becomes equal to 7. So, 7 plus 4 uh, it is equal to 11 in the case of the last iteration. So, I have given the calculation here number of t states is 7 plus 2 minus 1 into 10 plus 4 plus 4 plus 7 it is equal to 32. Now, we have assumed that 8085 is a 5 megahertz processor and time required is 1 by frequency which will be equal to 0.2 microseconds. So, this uh, three particular instructions uh, which can be treated as a subroutine, it is going to have totally equal to 32 t states. So, 32 into 0.2 microseconds it is equal to 6.4 microseconds. So, what do we conclude from this? For the execution of these three particular instructions, how long does the microprocessor take? The microprocessor is going to take 6.4 microseconds. So, we have some particular application where you want to generate a 6.4 microsecond delay between the first instruction and the last instruction. What you can do? You can insert this particular subroutine. That is you can call this particular subroutine to introduce a delay. So, uh, I would have given one more example here that is here if the count value if I keep it as f of that is maximum then what will be the time delay generated. So, if I want to keep the count value maximum then I will have to put it as f of f of in hexa means 255 in decimal value. So, 7 plus count minus 1 into 10 plus 4 plus last iteration it is going to be 7 for jump not equal to 0. So, 7 plus 4 it is 11 and since it is a 5 megahertz processor it is into 0.2 microseconds it will give rise to 714.8 microseconds. That is using these 3 instructions you will be able to create a maximum delay of 714.8 microseconds with the count value equal to f of hexa. Okay. So, this is one type. Next, you are going to use it as a 16 bit counter. When you are going to use it as a 16 bit counter, so I have given the instruction here. Uh, so, LXID comma count which is equal to 10 t states, DCXD what will happen? D and along with its parry it is going to get decremented. So, uh, it is 6 t states, mu a comma d is 4 t states, O R A E it is going to be 4 t states and jump not equal to 0 loop 1. Loop 1 is here and it is equal to 10 or 7 t states. Once again, when the condition is true, 
true it goes inside the loop when the condition is true it goes inside the loop in that case uh, the number of t states is 10 when the condition is false it comes out of the loop and it goes to the next instruction in that case the number of t states it is going to be equal to 7 ok so you will be able to follow this program now we will see how to calculate the t states ok so we will see the t state calculation so what is it what is this uh, t state for dcxd dcxd t state it is equal to 6 t states plus mu a comma d it is equal to 4 6 plus 4 plus 4 plus 10 when the condition is not true the loop is going to be repeated when the condition is not true the loop is going to get repeated itself again and again so in that case the condition is going to be 10 so 6 plus 4 plus 4 plus 10 when the condition is not true it is equal to 24 t states when the condition is true that is you give a count value here and it will get odd with itself so whatever count value you give here this loop will be repeated that many number of times suppose i give uh, 0 0 ff then the loop will be repeated ff times suppose i give 5 3 2 2 times then the loop will be repeated 5 3 2 2 hexadecimal times okay so what will happen in the last iteration we'll see now in the last iteration what will be the value of dcxd it is 60 states uh, mu a comma d it is 40 states orae it is 40 states whereas in the last iteration what happens the condition becomes false here so what will happen the t states is, it is equal to 7 so in the last iteration alone what will be your t states it is equal to 21 t states okay so now you are going to calculate the time delay lxid comma count it is 10 t states 10 t states plus count minus 1 into 24 count minus 1 whatever value you want you can give for your count into 24 that is when the condition is not true when the condition is not true it is 24 t states so into 24 in the last iteration your condition is true so it is 21 t states ok so here for example I have given count is equal to 0 ff hexa which in decimal it is equal to 4095 and you will be able to follow this it is equal to 98287 number of t states states so operating frequency is 5 megahertz which will give rise to 0.2 microseconds and therefore time required to execute the program is total number of t states into its speed it is equal to 19.6574 that is to execute this particular i mean five uh, instructions it is going to get repeated along with the loop what will be the time taken by the processor of 5 megahertz frequency it is 19.654 milliseconds ok so if i put a maximum value so this is lxi d comma count instruction lxi d comma count instruction so i'll be loading d e pair b c d e h l so d e pair is loaded so i can load it with 16 bit value so 16 bit uh, i mean sorry uh, 16 bit value na maximum value can be ff ff hexadecimal times in decimal it is equal to 65535 so with these uh, five instructions maximum delay that i'll be able to create is 314.569 microseconds okay so this is a nested loop we'll make a small difference here so what we'll do is we'll load some value then we'll use two registers here we are using b register here and then we are using c register here so what do you do here mvc comma ff dcrc jump not equal to zero loop one so this loop one will be repeated how many number of times this loop one will be repeated ff times during the last iteration alone what does it do it comes out of the loop and then what happens to this dcrb b value is 38 hexadecimal times so the outer loop will be repeated 38 hexadecimal times and each time the outer loop is getting repeated what happens to the loop one the loop one gets repeated itself each time the outer loop gets repeated what happens to the loop one the loop one also gets repeated that's why you call this as nested loop or you can tell it also as loop within a loop loop two is the outer one and loop one is the inner one okay so time delay for loop one you can you you have already seen this calculation mvic comma ff dcrc jump not equal to zero loop one we have already seen so tl1 is equal to 714.8 microseconds we have already got this answer so we are seeing how do you calculate the time delay for this entire thing that is time delay for loop 2 you are seeing so time delay for loop 2 is 56 to the base 10 how do i get this 56 to the base 10 it is nothing but this 38 hexa in decimal it gives rise to 56 to the base 10 
into this loop is going to be re repeated each time the outer loop gets exceed, uh, executed. So that is why I write this as into TL1 that is 714.8 microseconds plus outside this 7 plus 4 plus 4 plus 7 it gives rise to 21 into the sp uh, speed of your microprocessor that is 0.2 microseconds and it is giving rise to 40.264 microseconds. This is how you calculate time delay using nested loop. What is the advantage of using nested loop is here you can give a maximum value of FF and here you can give a maximum value of FF. So, automatically this value will be comparatively larger. So, if you want to create a larger time delay you can go for nested loop techniques otherwise we can go for simpler ones ok we will see a small example here. So, what I have done is I am uh, writing a small subroutine program to create a time delay for 100 microsecond with a system of a 0.2 microsecond uh, speed or my 0.2 microsecond clock cycle ok I am writing it as a subroutine program. So, that I can use the subroutine program that is I can call the subroutine program anywhere uh, in my main program suppose I am generating a square wave what can I do call I can uh, call I can give and then I can give a label here and I can call the subroutine and then I can generate a square wave of 100 microsecond. So, I have written a small subroutine program. So, we will do the same thing in the reverse now. So, what is given here? The microsecond value is given here that is time delay is given here you are supposed to calculate the count value. So, MVAC comma count you do not know the value of count you are going to calculate it DCRC jump not equal to 0 up it is nothing but loop jump not equal to 0 uh, loop and then here you have a return. So, what do you know time delay is equal to 7 is nothing but C count value plus count minus 1. So, you do not know the value of count into 14, 14 is nothing but 10 plus 4 plus for the last iteration it is equal to 7 plus 4 it is 11 into the speed is given as 0.2 into 0.2 microseconds. So, how much should the entire time delay be equal to it must be equal to 100 microseconds it is equal to 100 microseconds. What are we supposed to do now we are supposed to cal calculate the value of count. So, when we do this ordinary mathematical expression we get it equal to 35.42. So, you round it off to 35 and your uh, count value in hexa if you are going to convert this 35 in terms of hexa you get it equal to 23. So, this can be used as a subroutine program wherever in your main program you want to create a time delay of 100 microsecond. If you are going to use it as a subroutine program you can call it again and again in your program whenever you want to create a time delay. Okay. So, I will try to show you a practical example of a traffic light controller using counter and delay loop. Okay. So, now we would have seen traffic light. So, what happens a turn signal to red then there will be a time delay. Then what happens it goes to yellow then there is a time delay then it goes to green then you have a time delay. So, what I have done here is I have given a simple technique that is MVI A comma not 1. Then you send it out to some port assume through this port uh, in this port you have uh, you have it connected to red yellow and green LEDs. So, what do I do each time I am not going to write the subroutine program I am going to just call the subroutine program call delay red. So, what will happen it will go to the delay red subroutine this delay red subroutine can be any program ok it can be any program that you have written earlier. If you want you can use this particular subroutine program also for this instruction. So, I have left it to your choice. So, what you can do is you can write any subroutine program. So, we have seen subroutine programs for examples. So, you can create any delay for but uh, in the same way yellow if you want to change the time delay you can change the time delay or you can have the same one similarly delay for green. Then what will what what have what should happen it should get repeated. So, I put a loop and then I go back here what you are supposed to do is you are supposed to delay, write a delay subroutine depending on what time period you need. So, the program will be over. Thank you.